Hey, Shell. I'm just uh, reading a cool book called The Last Lecture by Randy Posh on my iPhone on the Kindle application. You know, Amazon.com has this iPhone or uh, Kindle, it's called. It's a book reader, but it also is available on the iPhone, so I read almost all my books on here. For instance, you can click Get Books, and then you can get whatever book you want, but I already have, here's the last lecture, Think and Grow Rich, um, which is one that eventually you'll want to read, Sniper One, The Art of War, Iconoclast, I mean, there's I have about 40 of them on here, um, is really good, and I'll, uh, here, just come sit down and I'll show you, or I'll, I'll read you some parts that I thought were really cool. All right. So... This guy, Randy Posh, right, he had pancreatic cancer, and he had four to six months to live, right? So he decided to give a last lecture to his class, his computer science class, and basically tell them all the little things that he's learned in life that have got him to where he was. But he says about his family when he was a child growing up, we didn't buy much, but we thought about everything. That's because my dad had this... in infectious inquisitiveness about current events, history, and our lives. In fact, growing up, I thought there were two types of families, those who need a dictionary to get through dinner and those who don't. We were number one. Most every night, we'd end up consulting the dictionary, which we kept on a shelf just six steps from the table. If you have a question, my folks would say, then find the answer. I just think that's so cool. That's really cool, actually. I know. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yeah. When he began his last lecture, when he finally went to give his last lecture, there is a neat, there's a neat part. Okay, he says I was wearing um, the oval Randy name badge, badge given to me when I worked at Disney as an Imagineer. I was paying tribute tribute to that life experience and to Walt Disney himself, who famously had said, "If you can dream it, you can do it." I thanked the audience for coming, cracked a few jokes, and then I said, "In case there's anyone who wandered in and doesn't know my backstory." My dad always taught me that when there's an elephant in the room, you introduce it. If you look at my CAT scans, there are approximately 10 tumors in my liver, and the doctors told me I have three to six months of good health left. That was a month ago, so you do the math. Then he says, I flash a giant image of my CAT scans up on the, of my liver up onto the screen. The slide was headlined, The Elephant in the Room. <laughs> Isn't that it's crazy oh, yet, yeah, like, oh, tear-jerking and yeah. scary, you know? I mean, especially because he's acknowledging it and he yeah. knows it's coming. Everybody's thinking it anyways, so he figured, let's get yeah. this out of the way. And he said he had huge red arrows pointing to each of the tumors, each of the ten tumors. Eesh. He said, I let the slide linger so the audience could follow the arrows and count my tumors. He says, all right, all right, I said, that is, that is what it is. We can't change it. We just have to decide how we'll respond. That's we, really amazing. Yeah, I know. We can't change the cards that were dealt. We just change, or we just change how we play the hand. Holy cow! So that part is awesome. Okay, so this I thought was hilarious and a good way to handle kids, right? It's called the chapter is pouring soda in the back seat. So he says, for a long time, a big part of my identity was a bachelor as a bachelor uncle. In my twenties and thirties, I had no kids, and my sister's two children. It goes on and on. Chris and Laura uh, became the objects of my affection. So, where does he say? But a dozen years ago, when Chris was seven and Laura was nine, I picked them up in my brand new Volkswagen Cabrio convertible. So, you know, he's this uncle and the kids are like, Oh my God, they have a convert he's got a convertible. Um, so, his sister says, Be careful in Uncle Randy's new car, my sister told them. Wipe your feet before you get it. And don't mess anything up and don't get it dirty, you know? Oh boy. It's like, whatever you say after don't is what they're going to do, yeah. you know? He's, so, he said, I listened to her and thought, as only a bachelor uncle can, that's just the sort of admonition that sets kids up for failure. <laughs> of course they'd eventually get my car dirty. Kids can't help it. So, I made things easy. While my sister was outlining the rules, I slowly and deliberately opened a can of soda turned it over, and poured it on the cloth seats in the back of my convertible. <laughs> so he pours this whole can out. His message, he says, my message, um, people are more important than things. 
What a great message, right? A car, even a pristine gem like my new convertible, was just a thing. As I poured out that Coke, I watched Chris and Laura, mouths open, eyes widening. <laughs> Here was crazy Uncle Rand Randy completely rejecting adult rules. I ended up being so glad I spilled that soda because later in the weekend, little Chris got the flu and threw up all over my back seat. He didn't feel guilty. He was relieved. He had already watched me Chris in the car. He knew it would be okay. So whenever the kids were with me, we had just two rules. One, no whining. And two, whatever we do together, don't tell mom. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's awesome. He says, not telling mom made everything we did into a pirate adventure. Even the mundane could feel magical. So he that's goes true. on to say he'd take him to Tuck Chuck E. Cheese, hikes, museums. Uh, sometimes he'd take him to a hotel just so they could go in the pool. So what a great message. I thought it was awesome.